Hi everyone, welcome back. Today, make sure you take advantage of the Moo Moo link down below. As you can see from here, you can get up to 20 free stocks. All you gotta do is put 100 in, you'll get 10 free stocks worth up to $20,000. A grand will give you a shot at 20 free stocks. You will get 20 free stocks for a grand deposit and a shot at 40,000 free stocks plus an entry in the sweepstakes. Take advantage of that. And then of course, come on over to the Patreon. For those that don't know, we have a new 2023 recession portfolio and we're starting a short portfolio within the next I'd say two weeks. I want to wait till the 13th and see how the data comes out and then go from there. And of course, I believe we're going to have a very nice time with that short portfolio in 2023. And so you can do it over at the Patreon link in the description, or you can join here on YouTube. We are now have an opportunity to do that as well. Join the channel membership. Hit the join button right next to the subscribe button down there, and you can join up into it. You can come over to our community and see that. So you gotta be a Tesla Cat supporter or higher for that, and you'll be a part of our private discourse. Now today I wanted to talk about some of the experts out there and what they believe is going to happen to the economy slash stock market slash everything we're investing in, because you need to understand this. This is the hard truth. You don't have to just make money on the way up you can make money on the way down. And just like you see all signs pointing towards, say, a major bull market, say we have the government coming out and giving tons of free cash to everybody in terms of stimulus. They cut taxes for corporations. They do all this. We have an idea what's going to happen to the stock market once they do all this. And then we say, oh, but people are investing much more money. Institutional money's pouring in. You know how the market's going to go. It's going to go up. And just like that, and then you see the Fed's cutting rates, everything. And we'll have a time like that again in the future. But right now, that's not what we have. Right now, what we have is the Fed is continuing to raise rates. We have continuation of quantitative easing. And it's going to get uglier before it gets better. And I think everybody believes that we're almost done. Like the pain is almost over. But you have to realize a few things. History does not lie to us. When we go back and we look at the financial history of the markets, the economy, during the past recessions all the way back up to 1940s, they give us a little bit of a, a lesson. It doesn't mean past results are going to repeat. You hear that in the financial world all, all the time. Past results do not guarantee future success. And it's absolutely true. What we can do is we can use statistical probabilities to come up with what probably will happen based on what has happened in the past and where we're at now. No two events are absolutely 100% the same. And so we can expect different outcomes even if they were the same exact situations. We know that nothing could be repeated exactly like it did before. I always say the market's like two snow flakes coming down. They look uh, so much alike. They should be alike, but they're not. And so that's one of the things I'm trying to prepare people for. But I can tell you this. The Fed is eventually going to lower rates. Once the Fed starts to lower rates, we know what's going to happen. That is that the bonds are going to continue to absolutely start to go through the roof. We have one of the worst years, and I'm going to look at leveraging into bonds and taking chances as well as my normal positions. I am looking to get more gains than I'd say the less risky you know, way to do it is. So if this is something that's interesting to you, you want to see the 2023 portfolio. Of course, that's going to be your normal bond, BND. I'm already sharing that. But if you want to see some of the lever stuff, I'll be doing that in 2023. Probably, maybe, we'll say, there's a possibility that you could see it in 2022, but most likely 2023. We only got a few more weeks until then. And I believe, depending on what happens with the December 13th data, that's going to have a big impact on when I pull the trigger of getting very aggressive with bonds. I've been slowly DCAing into them, and I believe I'm going to be probably tripling the size of my current positions for the Patreon. You guys know how much I got in there. I'll be tripling that. Think about how much money that is. So we're going to triple that position because that's how good I feel about bonds right now. I believe bonds are screaming opportunity for everyone. And so that's how I'm looking at that. But I also believe that the Fed is going to have to reduce rates eventually. And it could be because of a major recession, a major recession, not a soft one, but a major one. And if we had that in 2023, they're going to have to deal with it. And we might have to live with a little bit of higher inflation than we like, maybe the three to 4%. Remember the 2% they come up with is just a, an arbitrary number they came up with. All right. And they just came up with 2%. 
and we'll see if they're okay with three to four for a little bit until we get everything back to normal. And I think they're going to have to be. And so as we look at some of the, um, as you can see down here, some of the, the pros, Harvard, uh, out of Harvard, Jason Furman warns the U.S. economy could be headed for an incom incomplete hard landing. What does that mean? Well, there's all kinds of issues out there. I just don't think it's the most probable outcome that, that they have a soft landing. He believes it's going to be, it's not going to be that. He argued that it could be difficult to bring inflation all the way back to the Fed's 2% target rate in 2023, even as the economy falls in recession due to strong wage growth. So like I said, no two things are alike. We may have an incomplete hard landing where we do have a bit of a recession. We have inflation come down, but it comes down to something like 3.5. I said three to 4%, and he's talking 3.5, he's in the middle. And then the Fed has to sort of do another tightening cycle to get inflation down further. So could we see a double dip recession? Like, I already think we had a recession this year, in the beginning, Q1, Q2. By definition, it was. Could we see a triple dip recession? Get out of this recession, we come up and come back down. Something like Volcker, I believe he had two recessions he dealt with. Things we need to remember. Now, as we go forward, Jeremy Siegel. I don't want to forget about him, as you can see here. Jeremy Siegel. Stocks will soar. House prices will slump. And the Fed's rate hikes could tank the U.S. economy. He's talking in if 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 could but i'm gonna tell you what he's not wrong and that's one of the reasons i believe people should know you can make money shorting the market just like you can make money on the upside and the question becomes where do we go now i have a combination i will have a combination of this but right now i'm rotating in the sectors that usually do very well during a recession based on prior results and like i said if you want to see that come on over I, i'll share my buys and sells everything I've talked about those sectors before, the healthcare, the utilities, financials, energy, uh, consumer staples. So there are different ones I like, and plus some other things we've been doing, the bonds, put them all together. You can make yourself a beautiful recession portfolio, exactly what I'm trying to do. Another person now here, another billionaire stepping it up, as you can see. Oh, Ray believes what? Uh, I said found out inflation could settle around somewhere between four and 5%, not the three and a half. Uh, well above. So a lot of experts out there see different things, okay? And they, and he says they, that the stock market hasn't priced in very harmful Fed rate hikes. I agree 100% with this, that the damage to the Fed from the Fed can take six months to 18 months from every rate hike. We, can, we continue to have 75 basis point rate hikes, and it takes months, if not up to over a year, before they fully kick in. And so, yeah, the damage isn't even done yet. And people are like, oh, we're almost back to where we need to be. We're not even close. And you don't even know the repercussions of what they're doing. And then, of course, another legendary investor, Sam out here, says that liquidity crisis could have an odds of economy going into recession are very high. I agree once again. All right, these are things we need to look at. We just don't know how it's going to go. U.S. heading into shallow recession. No respite from rate hikes yet. And they did a poll, and they wanted to ask, they asked a lot of people in the business. And we come down and we take a look and we see what's going on. Here we go. Although the Fed run, uh, Fed funds rate hike is expected to peak at 4.75 to 5 next year in line with interest rate futures. One third of uh, economists believe that it's going to go higher. And I know there's some people out there who believe it's going to go higher. Core inflation likely remains stubborn. We anticipate that the tightening process to continue through Q2. So they think they could continue up. I didn't think it would get through into the middle of Q2. I could be wrong. Of course, others disagree with me and they believe it could get up there. And this is out of the, the chief US macro strategist out of TD uh, Securities. They expect to go to 5.25 to 5.5. So there's a lot of different opinions out there of what's gonna happen in the market. So the best thing we can do as investors is to plan accordingly. You can plan for the worst, hope for the best. And if we don't have a, a recession at all and the economy stays hot, and everything's good and inflation miraculously comes down and everybody's happy and housing still stays good and everything's good and well, the market will take off and i'll still have a very nice long portfolio that'll do well just not as well and the bonds though uh, remember if everything is fantastic the the fed would drop rates eventually and they would still go up if we go into a major recession and the fed has to loosen up the once again the bonds will go up i like bonds if i, I if you can't look at the charts of the bonds, look at the history, look at the recessions, what the Fed's gonna need to do here within six months to a year, and understand that we are at the end, the bottom. I don't know where, 
we may have hit bottom already. I'm not sure. We called that about a month ago. We've been buying. We thought it was a bottom. It looks like it's a bottom. It could always go back down. We don't know if we have new lower lows that the, the Fed has to get more aggressive. We don't know. But I will say this. If the Fed has to start easing up and they have to start taking care of this economy, I expect, I expect bonds to outperform. And they could even beat stocks for a year. I don't think over, over the long run they're not going to. But I think for the short term they could. And once I believe we get to a point with even bond prices, uh, with everything, that I believe the growth stocks, the more risky plays, all of these could make us more money, we're going to jump on it. And we are going to rotate quickly into some of those plays to try to make as much money as we can. And that will be some of the, the big stocks out there we talked about, such as like loading up even more on NEO and the Teslas. And so when I look at some of these, and you can see right here, China announces nationwide loosening of COVID restrictions. This has led to what? Well, uh, it led to NEO's jumping 40-something percent over the last month. Foxconn, which makes iPhones, reportedly urged Chinese government to loosen COVID restrictions. Everybody wanted to see it loosen, and they are starting to loosen things up. And so we'll pull up, uh, let's pull up NEO. And as you can see, some of the Chinese plays out there, you can see over the last month here, NEO is up 44.97%. We'll keep an eye on it. We'll see if it can continue that run and get back up to where I think it should be. And if China continues to open up and we see it going a different direction, we will see a lot of these Chinese plays recovering quickly. And if you watch the Hang Seng, it's been doing very well. And so there's opportunity out there. Now, for those who want to buy into the Hang Seng and some of that, you can do that right on the Moomoo app. They give you access to the Hong Kong exchange as well as the U.S. exchanges. It's one of the few places that do that. I absolutely love it. I think you should, too. I have a community over there, over 8,000. Join up over there as well. It's just free. You just look up Stockmo on there, and we throw some content in there. But if you want to follow along with the portfolios, if you want to see all the buys and sells, everything else, come on over to the Patreon. Link's down below. Or join on YouTube and join the channel member at Tessa Cat or higher. Hit that Moomoo link. Get those free stocks. Deposit 100 Get yourself up to $20,000 in free stocks for a $100 deposit. I appreciate you stopping by. Now let's get out there and make some money.